Good morning, everybody. Hi, thank you for joining me. And welcome to the UBC, um, sorry, UBC Camps Play and Learn at Home, the live stream. The dog's in the way again. <laughs> My name is Coach Carrie, and today we're going to be doing jump, land, and stick, which is gymnastics based. Uh, before we get started today, I just wanted to make sure I go over a few housekeeping notes. So for our live stream today, make sure that your video and audio is turned off so it doesn't distract us um, from our activity. Uh, also, if you have any questions, your caregivers can um, chat with uh, my moderator um, and they will, she will get back to you as soon as she can. Please make sure to use respectful language um, and just make sure it's appropriate for all ages just because uh, we can sometimes see what appears on the screen. Excellent. So make sure you have a clear area to work in. So he might have to get kicked out because I don't want to land on him. Um, also make sure if you're landing on sort of a harder surface or something, you might want your yoga mat, towel, or a blanket just to soften it. Make sure they're not slippery, um, but we can go over that as well when we're jumping. And if you do have access to a set tool or a box, we might use them as well. But if you don't, don't worry about it. You might, we don't really need it. You can test it out on your own at some other point. So very last thing, most important thing, stay safe and let's have some fun. So to start off today, we're gonna do a lot of jumping. So we might as well start with some smaller jumps. So you can start with some skipping. You can skip around your area, okay? You can skip forward, backwards. The reason why we like skipping, it warms up our feet a little bit. It's a little bit softer. And you'll also be able to hear if your neighbors, so if you live in an apartment, there might be people below you. You wanna try and make it as quiet as possible. So I can stomp, but that's not what we wanna do. We wanna try and make it super quiet, like we're being very sneaky, right? And then in gymnastics, we also do something called the bunny hop or rebound. So you want to glue or zip your legs together. My feet are really squeezing. So if I had a piece of paper in between them, it wouldn't come out. I'm gonna put my arms up. So I'm really tall and I'm gonna keep my tummy in. I'm gonna push off my toes, maybe a little knee, and just do a few hops. So you can hop forward, backwards. You can even go a little bit sideways really want to focus on keeping our feet together okay so keep trying that make sure it's quiet i don't want to hear any thumping excellent from the bunny hop we can turn into something called the frog the frog is very interesting because it's not a little jump it's as big as we can make a jump so our hands go all the way from the ground and when we jump up we want to try and reach for the ceiling. So it looks like that. Up. You don't even have to jump forward or backward. You just can jump straight up if you don't have a lot of room. If you want to try, you can jump forward. But make sure we're still trying to really land toes first to make it quiet for anybody that might be below us. So try a few more bug jumps. Excellent. So I'm not sure if you were with me last time, but we did something called the monkey walk, right? So we start in our bear, our hands are on the ground, our legs are nice and straight, and we can walk to do the monkey. One leg goes in the air, hands and foot. So you can do monkey backwards. You can try your monkey forwards. Always keep your arms really straight and pushing in the floor and change feet. The other leg is going to be my tail. All right, arms are nice and straight. Hands move, then my foot. Excellent. From there, we can do something called the wolf. So it's like the monkey, but your feet both stay on the floor and your hands both stay on the floor. Same idea though, hands move, then your feet move. We try to move everything all together, we're gonna belly flop onto the floor. So I'm gonna move back. Hands are down, nice and close to my feet. So I'm gonna move them and then my feet. And if you weren't here last week, 
I always say, if you're trying to put your weight on your hands, break the floor, push really hard. That's what keeps our face away from it. So we can keep going around, back to the sideways ones. Excellent. I feel pretty warm. I'm breathing a little harder. Hopefully you are too. So this is a good time because we're nice and warm to do some stretching. But we don't want to do just static stretching. That cools off our body. We want to keep this warm so we don't get hurt later. So because we do this shape later, I would like you to do the star. And you're going to break your star once and come up and then the other. So I'm actually going to touch my leg. You can try some more and a little bit further. So I find if I go up really tall on my star, my slouch, I'm not going to get very far. If I go tall, I'll be able, I got my angle that time. But as I warm up, it, I get to be able a little bit, do a little bit more. And then arms sort of to the front because we're going to bend forward and touch our chest. And come up and toes. So when I'm doing these, my legs are staying very straight. My hands go back. So you want to make sure you're not too close to a wall. I'm just touching my toes. And now we have a really weird one. So I'm going to take one hand over here. I'm going to touch it to this foot over here. So you're going to turn and fall over. Whew, that's weird. Back on the other side. Thank you. So if you can't get all the way to your foot, just touch your knee or your shin. That's okay. If you can get further, because some of us are more flexible, you can put your hand out past your toe. Excellent. From here, we're going to do something called dig a hole, and it helps open up our shoulders. So our, head, our legs stay nice and wide like they were in our straddle. Reach through, and then you're going to act like you're taking a big pile of dirt. Throw it across the room. So this one's a little bit faster. Notice I'm not coming all the way up. You just want to go to open up your arms. Excellent. We can come into our butterfly. This has a lot of good stretches. So we can stretch here. A lot of us when we sit on our butterfly tend to do this. It's really good for our back to use the weight of our legs and our toes and pull against them to really straighten your spine. We can, oh, stretch one leg out. You can stretch the other leg out. If you can't grab your foot and straighten your legs, you can grab your ankles, see if you can hold it. So that nice straight back that I was talking about here, I do that nice straight back when I lift my legs. See how straight I am? I'll stay up if I roll around. That's when we're gonna go over. So we really want for this stretch to stay up nice and tall, right? But we can try the roll. So why don't we hug? Make sure you're on a soft surface because your back might not like this. I have space for my face. So my knees are always a little bit apart. I'm holding really tight and hugging my legs really tight or it's gonna be hard to come up, right? I'm gonna look into my tummy, I'll roll back. And then I kick my feet out, but I'm still hugging them so they can't go anywhere. Take your legs out to bring yourself back up. So if you just fall back and you can't get up, that's okay. When we learn something new, we sometimes don't get it right away. So you can keep trying and when you get it, it will be amazing. That's actually pretty fun. So we are also gonna stretch out our hamstrings because these are the, the big muscles in the back of our leg that are sometimes really tight. And this can sometimes be pretty hard, but it's a great science experiment. So we're going to reach as far as you can. I'm going to draw a line on my foot where I can go. If you're only here, that's fine. Keep your legs really straight because otherwise we can't really tell if you got further. So as far as you can go, we're going to roll back like we did. We're going to run on the ceiling. Come back up, kick your feet up, and see if you get further. So last time, I was only here on my ankle. This time, I got to the bottom of my toes. So not bad. I'll take it. Let's try again. We roll back, run on the ceiling, come forward, and reach. Oh, I got the tips of my toes. Excellent. So 
I've decided to add something for you to try today as well. Okay, the teddy bear roll. So when we first learn, this is kind of what it looks like. You lean on one side, you roll. And then most of us just do this, which is where a teddy bear goes. So that's satisfactory. But this can kind of be a little frustrating to get stuck in all day. So if you don't come out, just like when we were rolling, and we hugged our knees really tight to our chest. I'm holding my feet super tight. I'm really pulling on my feet. My feet are pushing out, and I'm kind of gonna kick one knee down and I push, 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 push with my feet. All right? So I'll come back the other way. I go down, around, push with my feet, but I'm holding on so tight. If they don't come out, chances are you might get up. So we have two things with the rolling that we can try to get up. It's really good for your tummy. It'll make it very strong and it's just fun to do. And when you get it, you'll feel really good. But don't get frustrated if you don't right away. It took me a while to get it myself. We're gonna go into our table. So this stretches our shoulders. It's also stretching my wrists a little. And remember, we want to have our thumbs to our bums. So our fingers are facing forwards because if we fall down, right? This way our elbows can bend this way your elbow will bend it will be very not good something else it's not going to bend as well as this it won't roll down excellent let's get to the very first thing landings so we can learn how to jump all we want if you don't know how to land it's not going to do us any good so we can use your pillow or something but i'm just going to go really wide on my knees I'm going to bend forward so I'm not far off and I'm just gonna have my fingers touching the floor. The reason why is I wanna try and roll down. So I'm really using my arms so that my face doesn't touch. I know where my feet have been. I don't want my face on the floor, right? So we can just go and roll. You don't have to come all the way down. Sometimes if you're going from further distances, you'll need it. But if you can stop beforehand, that's okay. So I'm just doing little pushes and I'm rocking on my knees. I'm actually going to use my blanket because my knees don't like that very much. So my blanket is actually cushioning my knees so it doesn't hurt as much. Right? And just like before, it's really quiet. You shouldn't hear a thump isn't doing any good. So we want to sort of roll down your hand, okay? So we've done a little bit of rolling back Sometimes when we're moving backwards really fast, if we flail out, hopefully there's a mat, but there's not always a mat in the real world. So we kind of want to learn how to roll. If we have too much momentum, we'll probably roll over our shoulder, but it'll, it'll save us from getting hurt. So we're going to start from our feet, hug your knees, and you're going to roll. Right? If you can't get up, that's okay. Just come to the side. Right? So as you get more comfortable with that idea. I'm just gonna go from here. I'm going to sit down and then I'm gonna roll, right? So the big thing that we're trying to do here is to not have any thumps on the floor. If you're thumping, that's normally when we're gonna get hurt, right? So we wanna make it really, really quiet. So I can even go, cause I've done this a lot, but if you're still new to it, you might, wanna, might, might not wanna start this right away, or you might want to make sure there's a big cushion behind you, but I'm just going to go from stand. I'm going to sit, my hands come down, and I can roll back. Okay. And then our last landing, landing on our feet. Preferably, this is how we always do it, unless we're trying to land on our hands. But ultimately, our landing on our feet is the most important, but we want to do the other ones before we're tired, because if we're tired, sometimes it's hard to actually stop. So for a motorcycle, right? You need to think of a really big motorcycle. So your hands are gonna be on the handlebars, your legs have to be over top of it, and you gotta bend to sit down. So this is what it looks like from the front, right? If I go to the side, my hands are on the handlebars, my legs are wide, and I'm gonna sit on the motorcycle. Now notice my knees, my toes are actually in line. My knees are going further here, and my heels come up when I do this, it's not good for my knees. So you want to actually really stick your bum out. It's going to help you. So we can try just a few. Nice and wide. Already have your hands up a little hot. 
and see how quiet you can make it. If it's really quiet, you did it right. Right, and sit back. Try a few more. Up, sit, up. And if you get it right, you can run for a little more. I like to run for a You don't have to, it's for me. If you want to, go ahead, it's pretty fun. At least I think so. So let's get into some of our jumps. So the most basic jump is a straight jump. And then, which is also known as like a pencil or a rocket ship. Um, and then we kind of go into the star jump. And we already did lots of star stands. So we've already been introduced. But the idea of jumping is if I'm going to the side, right? My feet are going to be a hip sway, right? So almost like I have a ball between my feet, right? I'm just going to bend down. And what I want to do is really push into my feet. So if I can push right into this little front part right there of my foot, it's going to be good. And then I just push and straighten everything. And then I come back down to land. So notice I'm almost starting in my motorcycle, go up, and I land in my motorcycle. So be really quiet, we hope. Sorry neighbors if we're being a little loud, but ultimately it sh should make it pretty easy and pretty nice and you shouldn't feel anything sort of jarring. Kind of like when you bump into a wall, we don't want our jumps to feel like that. So let's try some straight jumps. All right, make sure you squish down. You go up nice and tall. If we use our arms, it just helps us get a little bit more lift. Or you can just keep your arms out and try. Okay, so let's try three straight jumps. I need to think about two things. Number one, quiet. So when we land, we want to be very, very quiet and try to touch the ceiling. So we want to try and get really high, but still be very quiet. What do you think is most important? Getting high or being quiet? Which one did I say was good for us? Exactly, being quiet. So you're gonna squish down, jump up, and try two more. Up, oh, I'm so close. Up, oh, excellent. I didn't hear any big thumps, so I like that. And okay. so, if you're like, I know how to do a straight jump. I've done gymnastics before. Often when I mark people, the straight jump's the one that they don't get very well because they don't use their arms in their swing, right? And this one also turns into turning. So we can use your belly button, act like you just sneezed, a choo, or someone's trying to tickle you, ah, right? Or you're really cold. So all those things, squeeze your tummy nice and tight. And then we try and turn our belly button. So squeeze your tummy, and then you can jump and turn your shoulders. Jump, turn, oh, right? I didn't turn through my belly button. My shoulders turned me, but because my tummy was so tight, I turned. You can try again, up, and shoulders. But it's, so if I'm not tight, this is what happens. You're not gonna move, right? If I'm tight, even just standing, oh, everything moves, everything shifted, right? So keep that in mind if you're trying to add turns. If we're jumping off of something, you always either want to land facing forwards from where you jumped or facing where you jumped. So it's a half turn or a full turn. The side turns are a little hard on our knees, so we want to avoid those. So now, star jump. So we already learned our straight jump, right? Star jumps is sort of the same idea. We don't really want our arms in front of us. But if you think jumping jacks, you're already halfway to a star. So let's do some jumping jacks. Open, there. So this is your star, right? That's our star, right? But I didn't say jumping jacks. I said star jump. So the difference between a jumping jack and a star jump is this is only done in the air. When you jump and when you land, you want to be back to this one. Ready? So I'm going to try one big jump up. Oh. So it's called a star. I like it because you kind of explode and you're big and you're shiny in the air, but then you disappear. So it's kind of like the twinkling stars. Let's try it again. If you land like this, that's okay. We are, sometimes we got to work a little bit harder to get stuff, which is fine. So ready? And we go skinny and explode. Excellent. Make sure it's still quiet. So my side one, I'm still bending down and then landing into my toes. Okay. So let's try three star jumps. Being skinny. Explode. Ooh. Explode. Oh, excellent. 
Okay. So you can also twist in your star jump. Some of us think turning is easier to start. Some of us think turning is easier after. If you're still trying your star jump or you land in your star, that's okay. Just focus on doing that if we're adding something else to it. When we're adding something new, go back to where you can land it safely, right? So if I can do a full turn, but I'm trying to do a star, maybe I'll only do a half turn to a star. So what I'm gonna do is you can either turn first into your star and land. So that would look like this. If I jump and I turn star land, or I can land like this, that's fine too, right? The other way is you jump into your star and then turn on the way down. So if I jump, star, turn. That one, notice I wasn't as good at. So some of you will be better at the second one. Some of you will be better at the first. Some of you might not want to turn at all. Totally fine. You always want to do the one you're good at until you're really good. You can make it harder and then try the one you're not as good at. Because we want to be able to turn both ways, especially when we get into harder skills, right? So gymnasts don't always just do one turn. Sometimes they do two or three in their skills. So we want to have the ability to do that too, right? And if you're like, I know how to do star jumps, I know what I'm doing. There's also the straddle jump. So just like the star, right? When we're sitting or standing in our star, that's what we want to hit in the air. The straddle is what we want to hit in the air. So it's a little bit harder, right? And sometimes just to warm things up, you're gonna like take your foot, right? So this is a half straddle, it's not a jump. It's not a full straddle because both hands or feet need to be up, right? And then just do a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the side so you can see because my star will be straight. That's my star, my straddle. My feet came to the front, right? So those are ones you can try as well. And you might not hit your hands right away. That's okay. We wanna make sure we land on our feet. And if you've heard of my straddle, it's a little bit louder. So I'd wanna work on that one before I moved on to something harder with it. So the last one I have for you today is the tuck. This is the tuck jump. So I like to say to the kids that I coach, sink a cannonball into the pool. Jump like this into the pool, right? The big thing with a tuck jump, if we land like this, we want to make sure there's space for our face. So if we land on our bum and our knees are right in front of us, what often happens is our head, go to the side. I landed, but my stomach wasn't set right. My head is going to go here. If my knees are together, it's not fun. It happens to a lot of us. So we always say space for your face, right? It's better to have a little bit extra room and my shoulders are going to hit into my knees than my face because it doesn't feel good. Your eyes will water, even if it's more just the sun. It's not a fun experience. We want to avoid it. So we leave space for it, right? So ways to think about it is if we stand, right? I'm going to go down into a tuck squat and up really, really quickly because this is like an idea of how fast you need to go. So we can go, I'm going to go a little wider. So tuck and stand. You even need to go faster than that. I don't know if I can do this fast enough to do it like a duck. Let's try it again. Down and up. So notice my knees are coming out, right? I'm still sitting my bum really far back so my knees aren't going out past my toes. And then I'm tuck, right? Up, tuck, whoo, right? So just like with the straddle, we can warm up with one foot. Notice how it's out to the side. You can always see my belly button. Here's the belly button, belly button because that means I'm leaving space for my face when I'm grabbing my knees, right? So one way to start if you've never done a tuck down is just to put your elbows at your wrists and your hands up and then try and touch your knees to your hands, right? That's a very common one, but that's not a real tuck down. It didn't look like a cannonball into the pool. So when you actually try your tuck downs, instead of touching the top of your leg, you wanna try and touch your shin, right? So let's go down. Big tuck jump. Oh, oh. Nice. Ready? We can try it again. Even if it's just this one, because that's where you're comfortable and you're not going to make people downstairs mad, that's okay. Right? So let's try again. Tuck jump. Oh. Oh. 
I made that one nice and flat. I'm proud of you. Ready, one more. Tuck down. Excellent. So sometimes when we're doing a tuck down for something, it's a little easier if we're good at landing. Always try your landing first to do it off of a bit of a height. So I'm going to go back to my very first thing in my motorcycle landing. See? Right? I can try my straddle. Ooh. Right? That one was still a little loud. I need to try, I work, need to work on that one. And finally, my tuck jump. There. That one I could quiet down a bit. All right. So always think of it as a cannonball. So thank you very much for joining me today. You can add turns to any of these jumps at any time, and it'll be really good. You can keep practicing and making them as hard as you want. So that's it for today. Uh, join UBC Camps again on May 14th from 3.30 to 4.30 for children 9 to 12 for hand-eye coordination games. And just thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a really good time. You probably want to go for a little bit of a walk, maybe move your joints around a little bit. You might be a little bit stiff, right? Just make sure you don't stop and sit. Just go for a walk. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. Bye.